Bounce rate was gone in Google Analytics 4, and now it's back, but it is very different. In this video, I will show you how it's calculated, how is it different from the older Google Analytics versions, and how to add it to your reports. There are many things to learn, so make sure that you watch the video till the end. In Google Analytics 4, a bounce is a page or a session where a visitor was not considered as engaged. Well, now you might be wondering what is engaged according to Google Analytics 4. And let me tell you that. Engaged in GA4 means that a visitor stayed at least 10 seconds on a page, but you can tweak that. And later in this video, I will tell you how to do that. Then another possible criterion is that a visitor viewed two or more pages on the same session or a visitor has converted. So if any of these three conditions are met, then it means that the session was considered as engaged in Google Analytics 4. So if none of these conditions are met during the session, that is a bounce. Basically, if you have tried to work with Google Analytics 4, up until this point, you probably noticed a metric called engagement rate. So basically, bounce rate is an inverse metric, which means that you can calculate bounce rate with this simple formula. Personally, I don't think that staying 10 or more seconds on a page should be considered as an engaged session. That is why I would recommend that you increase that number for up to 60 seconds. It might be 30 seconds or it might be even more. And you can do that by going to admin, then data streams, select your website data stream, then scroll down and click configure tax settings. Then click show all and select adjust session timeout. And here I would recommend that you increase the timer for engaged sessions, maybe to 30 seconds or maybe even more like 60 seconds or so. Obviously this will increase your bounce rate, but at least it will give you a bit more realistic view rather than 10 seconds. Because think about how you browse the website. You might often just land on a page, stay for 11 seconds and then leave. Does that make you an engaged user? Well, definitely not. So once you change this setting right here, click save. And after that, this part will change to 60 seconds as well. Now let me show you how to add bounce rate to reports because by default it is not displayed. And then we will come back to comparing the difference between the old bounce rate in Google Analytics 3 and older versions against Google Analytics 4 because that difference might be important in your work. To add bounce rate, go to reports and then let's add a report to, for example, engagement pages and screens. Then you will need to click a pencil icon right here to customize the report. If you don't see this, then it means that you don't have enough permissions in this property. Click customize report. Then let's click metrics and add metric. Then keep looking for bounce rate. You can make it more visible, for example, to drag it next to the engagement time and then click apply. Also, another thing that is not displayed here by default is a dimension called landing page. So here's what you could do. You can click on dimensions, then add dimension, and then keep looking for a landing page. Click it and then click apply. Then click save, save changes to the current report, save. Now let's go back and let's see how this works. So first of all, you can change the primary dimension from something that you have here to landing page. And then you can see what was the bounce rate of those sessions where people landed on that particular landing page. Obviously, this is data from my test website. So I'm usually visiting more than one page on these pages, or maybe I spend more than you know, 10, 60 seconds or whatever. That is why my bounce rate is pretty low. But on these pages, we can see that I just visited them and then was considered as not engaged. You can do the same thing for other reports. For example, you can go to acquisition and traffic acquisition, and then you can click the pencil to customize and in the metrics add the bounce rate. So add metric and bounce rate, click apply. Then we can actually maybe go back to metrics and change its location next to the engagement rate. Or maybe if you don't want, you can even remove the engagement rate if you don't find it useful, then click apply, click save, save changes to the current report and save, then go back. And there you have it. Now you can see the session default channel grouping and their bounce rates. If you want, you can also customize this report even more and build it or actually recreate it in explorations. So you can do that by clicking the 
Edit Comparisons button here and then click Explore. Google Analytics 4 will then try to recreate that very same report in Explorations. And you can see those metrics right here. If you want to see more of them at the same time, you can hide these sidebars. You can try to zoom out a bit just to see the columns right here. So here we have the bounce rate. And if you want to use it in other explorations and other customer reports that you want to build, then just make sure to go to metrics, click the plus, and then keep looking for the bounce rate. Then you will need to click this checkbox, import, and then you will be able to use that in the values section here. If some sessions don't make sense for your analysis, then you can just quickly remove them, for example, here, here, and that change will be reflected in the report. If you are migrating from the old version of Google Analytics to GA4, never compare bounce rate between two platforms because they are calculated differently. That is why numbers will never match. In the old Google Analytics, the bounce rate calculated like this. If a session has two or more page views or let's say two or more events that are interactions, then that session is not a bounce. And that's it. This is what affected bounce rate in the old versions. There is nothing about time on page or conversions. While in Google Analytics 4, if any of these three conditions is met, then that session is engaged or in other words, not bounce. So there are two different methodologies how the rate is calculated. That is why the numbers will never ever match. And that is how you can add bounce rate to Google Analytics 4. Remember, don't compare it to older versions of Google Analytics because the numbers will not match. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.